Hello, I'm Antonio Tomas Lorente Moore, and I'm about to talk to you about some of the research we've conducted on the use of recurrent neural networks for compressive re video reconstruction. This work was done alongside with Françoise Perrin and Nicolas Ducrot. We're all from the University of Lyon, from the Creatis Laboratory. And we'd like to thank the French National Research Agency, as this work was conducted within the Harmony project. I would like to introduce the motivations for our work. We aim to provide imaging tools for fluorescence-guided surgery. It has been shown that the study of the emission spectrum of the protoporphyrin 9 molecule helps us to discriminate between healthy tissue and tumorous tissue which is of course helpful to improve resection of low-grade gliomas, for instance. However, it is difficult to differentiate between the tumorous margins and healthy tissue. That is why further studies have shown that if we have the full emission spectrum, then we can differentiate between tumorous margin and healthy tissue. In order to achieve that, they had to use a tool with high spectral resolution, which is why they use the spectrometer. However, using a spectrometer means that they lost all spatial resolution and they had to scan each point to decide whether or not that was a tumor or that was healthy tissue. This is why we aim to provide a hyperspectral camera with the spectral resolution of a spectrometer and with a, and with a special resolution of course and when we take a deeper look at the current available technologies for our hyperspectral imaging and when we compare it to the pointwise detector that is a spectrometer we can see that first things first on the multispectral imaging part of the table we have to make a compromise between the cost of our imager and the spectral resolution of such imager. And even for the best images, we don't quite achieve the spectral resolution of a spectrometer. So, what we'd like to have is, of course, a, um, a, a, a hyperspectral camera with the spectral resolution of a spectrometer with a cost close to that of a spectrometer. So the optical setup that we have considered to design this hyperspectral imager is that of the single pixel camera where we replace the point detector with a spectrometer. So the, the way it works is, is that the, the image of the scene comes from this lens into, and then converges into the digital micromirror device. The light is then partially reflected to the system of relay lens and converges onto an optical fiber to then reach the spectrometer. So let's talk a bit about the single pixel camera and how it works. As the name implies, it's a camera that can make an image with a single point detector. In our case, as I said previously, we have replaced that single point detector with a spectrometer. The key trick to this single pixel camera is that we modulate the image of the scene with a certain number of user-defined functions uh, through the means of the spatial light modulator. So in our case, the spatial light modulator is a digital micromirror device, which is an array of small mirrors that can be tilted on an off state and an on state. So for instance, if we want to modulate the image of the scene by a pattern that looks like this, which this is a, an Adamard basis function, we would need to tilt some mirrors in a non-state to achieve the white um, part of the function, and we would need to tilt some mirrors in the off-state to achieve the black part of the function. So then we modulate, after we've modulated the image of the scene, we converge into the single point detector and that gives us a measurement. We can then change the configuration of the digital micromirror device, give it another pattern and make another measurement. If we do so sequentially, uh, 
we can acquire a sequence of measurements for different patterns. By post-processing those measurements, we can then recover the image. So how does this translate mathematically? Well, we aim to retrieve the different frames FT of a video when we only have access to the measurement vector MT. Now, since we want to achieve real-time imaging, it means that we need to spend as little time um, during the acquisition time as possible, meaning that the number of measured measurements in the measurement vector will be far below that of the number of pixels of the frame that we aim to recover. This leads to an ill posed inverse problem that we need to, rec uh, to solve in real time. What we propose is to exploit the spatial temporal redundancy in natural videos, meaning that when we take a look at two consecutive frames, most of the information on those frames is the same, and that <coughs> few elements have changed from, from one frame to the other, meaning that by exploding that, maybe we're able to improve the reconstruction quality. So let's start with a quick overview on static reconstruction algorithms. This means that these approaches only take into account the current measurement vector MT in order to recover the current frame FT. Traditionally, the frame was reconstructed by solving an optimization problem, like the one in equation 2. However, this also means that if we had a closed form solution to this optimization problem, usually the resolution of the reconstructed image was rather low, as we can see with the least square solution. But, and if we chose optimization problems that led to better reconstruction um, of the image. This would usually lead to an iterative scheme, which is less than ideal for real-time applications. Another approach that has been taken in order to solve this inverse problem is the one that uses neural networks for reconstructing the current frame, meaning that we give ourselves a highly parameterized family of nonlinear functions. And then we optimize the parameters of the function in order to minimize the mean squared error over an image database. But this does not tell us how to exploit the spatial temporal redundancy of natural videos. So we propose to use a recurrent neural network in order to exploit the spatial temporal redundancy and we would keep the information of the previous measurements and the previous reconstructed frames within the memory state. We would then train this recurrent neural network in order to minimize the mean squared error over a video dataset and we would get the optimal weights for such a recurrent neural network. This is the, um, the architecture that we used. And as you can see, the, pr the first layer is a fully connected layer where we aim to map the um, measurements into the image domain. And then once we've mapped the measurements into the, the image domain, we go through two convolutional gated recurrent units that would keep the information of the previous frames and the previous feature maps within the within the network and then the last layer is a convolutional layer where we just project the feature maps into the image domain. So in order to validate our algorithms we have trained and tested the neural network using the UFC 101 database that has 30,000 videos our model has about a million learned parameters, which is reasonably low, all things considered. We have used the result in another one of the presentations uh, here in ISBE, um, the one from Nicolas Ducrot, Francois Perrin, and myself. 
which means that the parameters of the first fully connected layer were determined anal analytically rather than through a training phase. Um, we considered that every one of our frames um, had been measured with 333 Hadamard patterns and that we aimed to recover images of size 64 times 64. We have compared the results of different methods in the table down below. As we can see, the proposed recurrent network has better reconstruction in terms of PSNR and SSIM when compared to other real-time methods. The first one that we compared to is the least squared solution, which is a real-time so, so, um, solution. And then the completion method described in the other proceeding from ISBI, and then the, to the to a static network designed by Heigham in 2018. So when we compare the different images that we can get from a video, from a neurosurgical video, we can see that the proposed RNN yields a better reconstruction for different frames as it has sharper details as you can see for instance in this appendix right here. Um, it yields better reconstruction when compared to a static network um, or even to the total variation. So overall the reconstruction is pretty good because we exploit that spatial temporal redundancy. So I'd like to conclude by saying that we propose a recurrent neural network to solve the single pixel video inverse problem. Our reconstructor is nearly instantaneous, meaning that we can get our estimated frame in about 10 milliseconds, which is really fast. Um, our perspectives are to take into account the noisy acquisition of the model, which we haven't taken into account so far. Thank you very much for listening, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask.